Hi guys, it's Actual Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. It's time for another discoveries and disappointments video. This time around, I kind of lost track of when and where I tried things. I have been wearing pretty much every day a different sample for the entirety of August and September. I'm kind of over it. <laughs> I want to wear my own collection, but uh, it means that I've tried lots of things and I can tell you guys about them. So that's why I'm here. As usual, we're going to start with a disappointment. So we end on a high note because, you know, positive vibes only. So the first one on the list is one that I wore yesterday, actually. I've tried it before, but I fully wore it yesterday. It is called, I can't pronounce it, by Andy Tower. Joking, it's called Fatalo, Fatalo Blue or something. And, uh... I really like Andy Tower's perfumes. The reason it's disappointing is I like his uh, ambery things, his spicy things, his leathery things, and his florals. And this one to me was an overdose of the Calone molecule. If you don't know what that smells like, it is a molecule that was, I think, discovered in the 90s. It was responsible for all of the Issey and uh, Escape by Calvin Klein. It's that it's a marine salty molecule that's very very powerful and this Vitalo Blue by Andy Tower was a huge overdose of that. If that's your style you might like it but it was disappointing to me because Andy Tower's best skills for me and where he shines is in his darker ambery spicy thing so his take on a marine was not for me and that's why it is a disappointment for me because i really like andy tower's perfume so that's the first one the first discovery is a brand new fragrance from diptyque and it's called kyoto it's a limited edition one and i've really enjoyed trying it out i got great longevity out of it even though it's a mellow fragrance it's the first time i think they've ever done a colored bottle like this it's pink it's a pink fragrance called kyoto and you might think, ah, oh, is it going to smell like cherry blossom? It doesn't. So quick backstory. They wanted the notes in the fragrance to represent the three pillars of art. The three pillars of art being heaven, earth and man. I don't know how... The earth part of the fragrance is vetiver and beetroot, which is really interesting. The heart note is rose and that represents man. Uh, there's also incense in the heart and it's a very light frankincense I would say and that represents heaven because incense is often an offering to the gods. I really like this it's a dusky rose it's a, it's a mellow gentle rose and even though it's got beetroot in there it's, it's not scary at all it's just got this gentle earthiness underneath really cool and if you open your mind a little bit and enter into a little bit of a fantasy world you can imagine that it's a cherry blossom fragrance real cherry blossom from trees that smells a little bit muddy a little bit earthy not altogether the prettiest smelling blossom i don't think it's not like orange blossom you know she rules the roost but i like this one dusky pink very gently incensey earthy rose that stayed on my shirt for a whole day and my skin for a really long time as well so that's the first discovery the second disappointment was one that I just cannot stand and I, I, it's a fragrance that gets so much love, not love but it gets hyped, it's quite an expensive perfume and when I tried it I just immediately wanted to wash it off. It's called Oud for Greatness and it's by a brand called Initio. This was all wrong, this one didn't go too well at all, this was a very unbalanced bitter fragrance that smelled mainly of birch tar. And birch tar is tricky anyway, it's not the easiest thing to wear, it is the note that's responsible for things smelling like a bonfire. This one to me didn't smell like oud, I think maybe, it feels to me like someone tried to create an oud accord with using birch tar because I've seen that before, there are certain things you can put together to create an oud accord but it didn't work. That's why it's a disappointment. The bottle is gorgeous. I really like it, but man, it's pricey. And uh, when I wore it, it was what's, I guess, known as a bit of a scrubber. I, I didn't want it on me anymore. And it's really strong. So if it's, if it's performance you like, yes, great. But to me, it didn't really smell oody. It smelled like a bitter birch tar. And that was kind of it. So yeah, 
On to the next discovery. The next discovery is something that I have tried before, but a couple of days ago I fully wore it for the first time. It is called Salome or Salome and it's by Papillon Artisan. Oh, this one is not to be played with. Funny story, I wore this out to dinner actually and I did think I was gonna be sitting outside, so that's why I wore quite a big amount of it. We ended up sitting inside and somebody in the restaurant actually came over to our table to complain. Can you imagine? It was very uncomfortable, but I was aware that it's a very strong perfume. This is fantastic. <laughs> it makes me love it even more. This is one of the most bombastic vintage animalic jasmines ever. Papillon Artisan perfumes are great. They are made by a wonderful lady called Liz Moores and she can create vintage style fragrances today. She is really good at throwback. She is not scared to make something aggressive. And now I really want this fragrance. It was fantastic. It was dirty. It was a femme fatale, I don't give a crap kind of fragrance. And I do kind of feel bad for the person that was sitting near us, but also don't come and over and complain. I, I don't know, it's not, I can't help it. I can't take it off. I mean, I guess I could have gone to the toilet and washed it off, but I'm not doing that. I'm not taking Lizzie's creation off. No siree. So Salome by Papillon Artisan. Fully wore it recently for the first time, fully discovered it. Now I'm obsessed, now I need it in my life. The next disappointment is called Begum Diamond something. I don't know, I'll put it in the note list. Somebody actually sent me a sample of this. I can't remember who, it was in a bunch of little things and I wore it one of the days recently because I've been wearing samples every day. And while I thought it was gonna be good, it turned out to be just vanillin in a bottle. Is a vanilla fragrance and it was the most basic level of vanilla perfume you can get. It was pretty much fake vanilla. It lasted a while, it lasted a really long time actually, so there is a plus point, but it's really nothing to do with real vanilla. It, it's a fake plasticky kind of gourmand vanilla with not much else going on. And as soon as I put it on, I thought, oh, I'm just maybe gonna just spray something over it. But I gave it a chance, you know, I give these things a chance. Maybe there was something waiting to reveal, but no, alas, it did not happen. So Diamond Begum, Diamond Begum. I don't, I don't know, I'll put the name here because I can't remember what it is, but it was hugely disappointing. The next discovery was another monstrous one, kind of in the same style as Salome. And this one is called War and Peace and it's by Arige Ladors, I think they're called. Oh gosh, I tried this briefly in a live video I did where I just sniffed random things. And I remember at the time being kind of wowed and taken aback by it. I have now fully discovered it and worn it. And if you like vintage, yeah, this one is fantastic. It's very animalic again, but this has a really big dose of iris in it. So it's got this suede-like makeup thing sitting in a lion's den. It's just, it's crazy complex, really, really strong. I like strong stuff. But yeah, if you like modern vintages, if you're into, you know, really old Estee Lauder perfumes or Caron, those types of perfumes, yeah, just a really good one. War and Peace, the name already had me thinking, oh gosh, you know, when I, I tried it without knowing what it was in the live, and then we ended up talking about it, but now I've worn it, I can fully appreciate how amazing it is and the artistry of that perfume. Softness and crazy all at the same time. It was a great one. The next disappointment is the brand new Miss Dior from Christian Dior. I smelled it recently, I put some on, I put some on a card. It's the new one with the, I think it's a silver bow, I'll put a picture anyway. Um, yeah, take any pink, perfume from the last five years. That's what it smells like. I will say the dry down was actually really nice. There's quite a big dose of sandalwood in it. So when it dried, it did give me a kind of sultriness, but ultimately, are we not done yet with this type of pink perfume? It, another thing I'm gonna say that's disappointing about that whole Miss Dior thing is it's just 
way too confusing. There are too many of them. They reformulate them all the time. You don't know which one you're gonna get. Then you've got a blooming one and then you've got this and that and then it's the Cherie got taken off. It's just a whole disappointing, just everything really. Yes, disappointing. Was it pretty? Yes. Have I smelled it a thousand times before? Yes, so we're gonna move on. The next discovery is the fourth fragrance I have tried by Freddie Albrighton. I talked about his fragrance Boys in one of my previous videos. I was sent the last sample from his collection by the lovely Jim. Thank you, Jim, if you watch this. This was called 15 Candles in Antwerpen. It's called 11 Candles in Antwerpen, not 15, for less. And this one I'm really impressed by. I've only ever smelled one other perfume before that has a candle wax note on purpose. This is great. This is a really nice, smooth, yes, it smells like candle wax, but it's not unpleasant. It's kind of wearable candle wax. It's got very nice, pretty tones going on as well. And I have no idea how he made the candle wax. No, things like that to me are very clever in perfumery. It's got to be a bunch of things and molecules and tweaks and ribbons and bows. But this one, yeah, really liked it. It has myrrh in it, it has beeswax, it's ultra smooth. Maybe it's a beeswax accord that makes it smell like, but it does actually smell more like candle wax, but not a snuffed out candle. It's actually if you were to just hold a candle to your nose and it's just a very clever piece of perfumery and I really enjoy trying it. So thank you, Jim. The last disappointing one started out as a discovery and then it petered out and it's a new fragrance to come from Mendita Rosa. If you don't know the brand, they are Italian. They have very fancy bottles with all of these handmade embellishments. Some of their perfumes are in my collection as being, well, on my want list at least, and I own one of them. They're great. This one is new and it's called Orlo. It started out really nice. It was, it was a Neroli perfume ultimately, but they're really pricey. Their perfumes are very pricey. Some of them are great, some not so great. The note list on paper is fantastic. It's got saffron, it's got pettigrain, there's lavender, there's rum, there's a bit of oud as well. And it started out, like I said, quite pretty, but ultimately for me, it was a very well done Neroli. And I wanted more of the darkness. I wanted more saffron and herbal and all these kinds of things. But really it was a uh, simple Neroli for me. And for the price, she has much better perfumes. For instance, Sonia Reale and Rituale. Amazing. And the last discovery is another Andy Tower perfume. I did try a bunch of them recently and this one was my absolute favorite. It's also, I think, one of my favorite names of a perfume ever. It's called Noontide Petals and this one's a really good example of aldehydes. If you like that golden buttery aldehyde type smell in a perfume, this one starts out really aldehydic with lots of flowers going around over the top of it. It has ylang ylang, it has tuberose, it has jasmine, it has geranium as well. There's iris in it, there's vanilla. So it's a really nice multi-floral aldehyde that's soft. It's kind of fuzzy around the edges and it's very, very pretty. I really liked that one. It was the best, like I said, out of all of the ones I tried by Andy Tower that day. So recently I wore it properly and just really loved it. So Andy Tower redeemed himself from the awful Fatalo Blue perfume and gave me Noontide Petals. So yeah. I still love him. Anyway guys, that's it. That's my five discoveries and five disappointments of late. It's not really a specific time. As I said, I've been trying so many things recently so I can bring you this video. I hope you liked it. I'm Outro Mano, trying to make the world smell better one video at a time. I'll see you guys soon, goodbye.